indeed like the big expiration of time. Tag match coming up this week on Championship Wrestling. Oh, I tell you, we're going to be looking at Dutch Mantel this week. Midnight Express will be here. Also, the team of the Assassins, Rick Morton is on the card, and a six-man tag team match will be the big expiration of time match this week. Some of the folks in it, Superstar Bill Dundee, Rick and Robert Gibson, beautiful Bobby Eaton, Stan Lane. Oh, boy, I'll tell you what, this week's going to be a good one. You stay right here and be with us. we got a dandy of a program lined up for you today, and I think some of the match is going to be most interesting, oh, baby. Oh, I think you are right. We have the Invader coming in here to take on the Dutchman, Dutch Mantel from Oil Trough, Texas. That's the opening match today. Then Roy Rogers will be teamed with young Rick McCord. They will be going against the Midnight Express, Dennis Condry, Randy Rose, and Norvell Austin. They'll be here in the second match in tag team action. Then it's going to be uh, Speed with Jimmy Hart going against Dennis Upton in a single match. Rick Morton teams with Chief Thundercloud against the team of the Assassins. And then a six-man tag team match, our expiration of time match today. Beautiful Bobby Eaton, Stan Lane, and Sweet Brown Sugar on one side of the ring. On the other, it will be Bill Superstar Dundee and the Gibson Brothers, Rick and Robert. Ooh-wee, boy, what an expiration of time match that's going to be for a fact. As a matter of fact, we've got some other ones, and Dave, I've also got an excellent film on a wild and woolly battle royal that I think everybody's going to enjoy. To get it all in, we better get going. We'll be back in just one moment. <laughs> Dutch Mantel in the ring right now. His opponent, the Invader, stepping up to ringside, and we are about ready to go with a one-fall 15-minute time limit match. The Invader, 200 pounds, is listed wrestling weight. Dutch, 224 pounds from Oil Trough, Texas. The current holder of that AWA Southern Championship belt, Dutch Mantel. This match, one-fall 15-minute time limit, and the referee is Jerry Calhoun. Bell time, and here we go, Davey. The Invader wrestling under the mask against the Dutchman. This is a non-title match, by the way. Over on the ropes. Referee there calling for a clean break and got one. Dutch Mantel back up the center ring. Leg dive. Puts the Invader down to the mat. Invader able to pull the right shoulder up. Dutch holding him down. Referee started to count. We saw Dutch on that leg dive the way he put that shoulder in the waist and drove him back, too. He was mm -hmm. pulling and driving at the same time. Beautiful. Dutch Mantel. Whoops, the invader over under the rope. Referee Jerry Calhoun there wants a break. He's got it. Invader back up on his feet. Invader side headlock. Dutchman picked him up. He drops him. Man, man. Nice move by Dutch Mantel. Dutch backed into the corner. Referee is there calling for the break. Vader finally breaks it with a little help from Dutch Mantel. Dutch able to shove him back away from the corner. Minute and a half gone. Dutch back on the ropes. Referee right there. Dutch walking away from the ropes. Out of the mat, the invader. Referee 
Did he start the count? Doesn't matter. He didn't get the three anyway. Invader has the right shoulder up off the mat. Dutchman still got the head locked. Long Vader jumps him into the ropes. Dutchman using the arm, put him down as he came off those ropes, and now the Invader finds himself in a headlock lying on the mat again. Two minutes gone. Two in a one-fall, 15-minute time limit match. Ooh, boy, the Invader is going to learn one of these days. You shove Dutch into those ropes, and that's twice. He's caught him with a vicious shoulder butt coming off of there. Face lock. Dutch Mantell, pretty well in control of this match all the way so far. Yes, so many moves that are so solid, Dave, that uh, it's the reason he's got that bell, because he can really go, and he will flat make you hurt on every one of them. The Invader, after hooking the bottom rope, got a break. Backs Dutch into the corner again. Invader using those corners. Knee to the midsection. Whip walks away. Dutch hits the turnbuckles hard, and the Invader follows. Vader grabbing Dutch in the headlock. Now backs him into the ropes. Whip into the ropes. Ooh, upper arm. The Invader successful with one of those moves. There's a cover. One, two. Dutch Mantell breaks it. Again to the ropes. This time, oh. Dutch Mantell caught him with a knee. And the Invader tried it one time too many. Dutch backs him to the ropes. Whips him across the ring. Down he goes. Dutch covers. One. Two and three. Three minutes, 28 seconds the time on it. And the win in the match, Dutch Mantell. All right, I'll tell you what, uh, when the invader started going after him, he started off by going at the eyes and then bang, whipped him in the corners and so forth like that. Old Dutch shifted it into high and uh, it was not too long before it was all over. We got more action coming up. We're going to be back to it in just a moment. <laughs> Let's take a look at some of the action. 23-man, two-ring battle royal is the way it started, and here it is. Martin Gibson, Condry and Rose as, Mart as Paul Martin walking Norvell Austin back to the dressing room. Rick Gibson trying to get in, there goes Rick Martin. Dennis Condry, beautiful drop kick, the referee is down. Gibson comes in, covers up Randy Rose, but referee Jerry Calhoun is down. Condry, who was eliminated, drops back in. Somebody holler for Paul Morton. Rose now on top of Rick Gibson. Count of one, two, three. And the winner in 12 minutes, 10 seconds is declared to be Randy Rose. Randy Rose. Dennis Condry picks up Rick Gibson, slams him into the turnbuckle. Randy Rose ties it around. Referee Jerry Calhoun was hurt very bad on that drop kick. He is still down. Paul Morton had counted out Rick Gibson after Condry had gotten back in after the elimination. There now, Norvell Austin is tying Gibson to the ring turnbuckle. The Midnight Express working on Rick Gibson. And they certainly deserve a fine because the referees have been abused. The official winner was declared to be Randy Rose. But a lot of objections from the crowd. And 
I think you saw it. Rick Gibson hung in the corner. The Midnight Express hammering away on Rick Gibson. Well, again, Paul Morton was pushed out of it. Jerry Calhoun back up, but he's still stunned. Again, a violation after violation. Plus, they are just pounding the stew out of Rick Gibson. Robert Gibson coming back out to help his brother. Rick is tied into the rope. Robert up in the ring, finally, and he's scrambling with the Midnight Express. There it goes. Rick Gibson, Robert has been busted open, and the Express, all three of them going after the Gibson brothers. Introducing at a total weight of 435 pounds from Nashville, Tennessee, Roy Rogers and his partner from Salem, Virginia, Rick McCord. Going against them at a wrestling weight of 477 pounds, the Midnight Express. The Midnight Express, Dennis Condry, Randy Rose, and Norvell Austin. This match one fall, 15-minute time limit. Referee, Jerry Calhoun. Looks like it's going to be, uh, well, it's hard to tell, but it looks like maybe Rose and Condry. And referee Jerry Calhoun telling them to shed one of the members of the Express out of there. They're having a little conversation about it. Rick McCord, fine young wrestler, as is Roy Rogers, but they've got plenty of work cut out for them right here. Bell time, Roy Rogers starting out against Randy Rhodes, and there is Norvell Austin is the one to go to the chair with the whistle. 
Dennis Condry and Randy Rose going against Roy Rogers and Rick McCord. The referee uh, over to be certain that they one of them stays outside of the rope while the other one's in. Roy into a standing side headlock. Shoulder from Roy, and he hooks that side, goes to a mare. Gets Randy Rose down on the canvas. Roy, as we have mentioned many times before, good height, great frame, and he'll fill out as he gets a little older. He really put it on Rose that time. This time a leapfrog back to him, and again, hooks ahead. A mare and down on the deck. Norville Austin making some kind of conversation with referee Jerry Calhoun. Uh, Condry had his knee over the second rope, and the referee said, let's pull it back out of there until it's time to come in. Randy Rose zinging up. Stiff forearm against Roy Rogers. One fall, 15-minute time limit out. And Rogers catches Randy Rose. Rick McCord now in for the first appearance. Randy Rose still in. He hadn't gotten back to the corner to tag Dennis Condry as yet. A lot of bad conversation about the uh, battle royal, the portion of it that we showed, the way they mishandled not only the referees, which they got the fine for, but what they did to the Gibson boys. Oh, Randy Rose trying to cram a shoulder right through Rick McCord. Hits the turnbuckle, and McCord has him back down. Jerked out of it. The referee calls for a break as he grabbed the hair to get him into that head scissors. Rose back over uh, having a conversation with Dennis Condry in the corner, but he's back out. Going to stay in there with Rick McCord. Two and a half minutes gone in the match. Thirteen and a half to go as Norvell Austin tooting that whistle at uh, the Express uses in the corner. McCord lifted up in the air. Rose walks him down. There's a tag on Big Dennis Condry. Randy Rose over holding him to keep him from going to the corner of Roy Rogers. And now Condry takes over with the Salem, Virginia youngster. In the air! Body slam. Condry drops to that knee across the chest. Four down again. Norvell took it upon himself to try to quiet down the crowd. He had no luck. Randy Rose puts him down. Rattled in the corner, Dennis. Suplex. He really banged him down hard. Oh. Roughing him up. Calls for a knee, and he slams the horn's head into the knee. And Randy Rose makes the tag, and Rose takes over. Body slam. Drops down hard with that knee, and now here's the part of it that he express when they get somebody hurt. Instead of going for the pin, all they're doing is uh, trying to punish the young fella. In the air, Norvell distracting the referee. Rose comes off, bangs down on top of Rick McCord. And right then and there, they could have gone for the pin, but they didn't. Once again, Condry up on the shoulder. And here comes the Gibson. out of there, and Robert Gibson and Rick Gibson with boards in their hands have busted the heads of Randy Rose and Dennis Condry. And Rick out and away. Robert going after Randy Rose, who is bleeding profusely. And 
the Gibsons, and I don't blame them one bit. It's not certainly anything that we use as an example. Qualification on Rogers and McCord had to be. That's what it was. Midnight Express, uh, going to get the victory, but not much satisfaction after the Gibsons hit that ring there. Boy, Ooh. I will tell you, as I say, that's not something you're going to uh, use as an all-time example of sportsmanship, but the Gibsons, after getting banged around by the Midnight Express previously, I can't say that I really blame them, Davey. No, indeed. I tell you, one of those uh, where the action as it ends on disqualification when the Gibson brothers hit the ring, time when the disqualification occurred, 4 minutes 38 seconds, and the official winners of the match, the Midnight Express. <laughs> The ring awaits as Dennis Upton and referee Jerry Calhoun step up into the ring. Here comes Speed, the opponent, Jimmy Hart. Jimmy's got his own chair now. It's uh, bright red, and on the back it says Jimmy Hart. I'm not sure what else it says. But uh, anyway, it's now at ringside, and we are about ready to go. One fall, 15-minute time limit match from Tupelo, Mississippi at 212 pounds, Dennis Upton. And going against him from the first family, the manager Jimmy Hart at a wrestling weight of 210 pounds speed. This match one fall, 15-minute time limit, referee Jerry Calhoun. Speed. Dennis Upton, as the bell sounds, action underway. Upton, tall guy. He's got a uh, height advantage of about 9, 10 inches on speed. Speed backs him to the ropes. Takes a swing at him, and Upton had left the area by the time the fist got there. Dennis backed onto the ropes again. Speed took a swing at him. with the cover. Dennis Upton kicks out of it at a one count. Upton, we've seen several times before. He has not been wrestling all that long, though. And boy, I tell you, once he gains some more experience, he may be somebody to reckon with with a height he has. He can reach halfway across the ring. Nice take arm, speed on the mat. A little over a minute gone. Dennis Upton rolling with him. Maintained the hold. Speed able to hook the bottom rope, though. Wrapped his feet around it. Referee right there called for the break. Speed, as he gets back to his feet, complained to referee Jerry Calhoun that he had his mask pulled. Upton. Top wrist lock. Gets Speed's feet up from under him. Bars the left arm again. Speed up on his feet. Picks up Upton. Body slam. Upton hangs on to him, though. That's twice already in the match that uh, Speed has tried to maneuver. And Upton has been able to hang on to the hole. Two minutes gone. Two minutes into the action. Off the rope. Into the leg of Speed. Dennis Upton hits the match. Upton with a backdrop. He's rolled down to the mat by speed. <laughs> Referee calling for a break. Not sure why exactly. I think maybe they were back in the ropes. He wanted him to break at that point. Speed. Whipped Upton into the corner over here. Now picks him up. Dennis body slammed. Trying to battle him back. Dennis Upton fighting his way to his feet. Turns speed, whips him across the ring. Back drops him. Speed hit the mat, bounces. He's up on his feet, but he's saying, wait a minute. Upton came in a little quick. Speed caught him with a foot. A 
cover by Speed. One, two, and three. He got him. Well, he got him with uh, somewhat of a clothesline off the rope. And Speed ends up uh, getting the victory there as a result. Dennis Upton leaving the ring. Put up a good fight, but did not get the victory in the end. Jimmy Hart and Speed leaving the area. The victory goes to Speed. The time on it, 3 minutes, 8 seconds. 3.08 the time. We'll be back with more wrestling action for you in a moment. Chief Thundercloud and Rick Morton already in the ring. Before we get the Cuban and the Iranian assassins out here, I want to get the king, Jerry Lawler, who uh, we've asked him to come on out here, bring us an update report on how he's doing. Jerry, all right. You're looking great. I got, I got a gorgeous new sport coat on there. Not you, new, Lance. Huh? Come on, give me a break. Oh, okay. Yeah. All different kind of looks like a Puerto Rican prom <laughs> dress, doesn't it? <laughs> you want to see? with us and uh and davey will take on the official introductions okay dave all right this is going to be a one fall 15 minute time limit match introducing a total weight of 407 pounds from san carlos arizona chief thundercloud and from nashville tennessee rick morton the opponents are not here yet but as soon as they arrive we'll tell you who they are it is a one fall oh here they come the assassins with jimmy hart Just sitting out here, Jimmy, just just to do the... All right, they've arrived. Now, their total weight, 456 pounds, with their manager, Jimmy Hart, the assassins, the Cuban assassin, and the Iranian assassin. One fall, 15-minute time limit match, and the referee is Jerry Calhoun. Okay, we're about ready to go as the uh, Cuban and the Iranian assassins, our guest commentator, Jerry Lawler. Who, how long is it going to be, Jerry, for your back in action again? Looks everybody like, everybody keeps asking me that. Looks like maybe one more week, Lance. I'm right. ready to go right now. You put me in there, <laughs> I'll send the whole first family to the emergency room. Well, the doctors uh, have told the king he better slide out for one more week and then he'll be ready to go as the Iranian assassin, Ali Hassan, Starting out against Rick Morton. Rick with veteran Chief Thundercloud as his partner. And the Iranian assassin, of course, with the Cuban assassin as his partner. Whoa! Well, I said Rick is one of, he's got to be one of the fastest wrestlers around. That's one of the best drop people I've ever seen. Chief Thundercloud takes over, snaps him down, gets a one count. That's about all he can go. Jimmy Hart pacing up and down the side over here. I don't think he wants to sit down too close to over where the king is. I just hope he turns his back on me one time. <laughs> what is he dressed for? Halloween party? Don't he know? He's got his holidays mixed up. It's New Year. Rick Morton in with a bar on Ali Hassan's arm. Well, that was a good move. Assassin went to uh, hip toss Rick. He reversed it and got him a hip toss. Look at Hart. That's his favorite tactic, Lance. I always complain. Anytime his man is at a disadvantage, it's complaining of that referee. Trying to get the attention off him. I think one of the strongest things to give the Devilies do that Hart does is distract the wrestler in the ring. He will get you so mad with his horsing around and sticking you with that walking stick and whatever that he distracts that wrestler. Makes it very difficult to concentrate on uh, the side. Well, look at that. Right there, he's distracting the referee. He gets the referee's back turned, gives the, gives the, 
the other wrestler an opportunity to go in and break the good hold that the chief had there. Or if you get, you know, if you've done something just like maybe an arm drag or a hip toss on one of his men, then Hart immediately complains to the referee. The next thing, the referee's asking you, hey, did you pull the hair? Did you pull the tights? It's breaking your concentration on the hold you've got. Like you said, distraction is what Hart's good at. Cuban assassin over banging a forearm into uh, Chief Thundercloud. Misses the elbow. Double Tommy Hawk. He chopped him up good that time. Next to Tojo Yamamoto, I think the Chief throws about the hardest chops I've seen in wrestling. Comes at him with a foot to the midsection. Side headlock. Tag on Rick Morton. Hook that arm. There you go. And, he, oh, pardon me, go ahead. I was going to say, this is the guy you got to watch out for. I understand that Hart has taught him how to throw the fire. Is that right? No. Did we see that somewhere down the yes, line? Yes, sir. Ask Steve Kern about that. Well, where do you think Hart learned that little trick? <laughs> I know. There you go. Morton staying right in there with it. Nice. Well, that arm drag popped him over and down. See, there's just what we're talking about right there. As soon as Rick got the man down, hard collar and he pulled his hair. The referee comes right over, talking to Rick. Did you pull the hair? It's a distraction, just like you said, man. Huh? Sure would be nice without him around ringside. Oh. Well. I'll let each individual answer that one for themselves. <laughs> Arm bar, Rick hanging on to the Iranian assassin, Ali Hassan. Hart doing a little whispering to the Cuban assassin. I can tell you that that will bring no good out of it. Oh, there's a good point. Oh, he got away. Rick had him. Yeah. Rick spun, went into that drop kick immediately. Hassan got out of the way. Look at Hart. He's as happy as he can be now. Rick Morton took a shot to the midsection and another from the Cuban assassin. Look at those boots that Iranian assassin. Man, you didn't pose for those boots, model your nose for those boots, dude. Look at those things. Big hooks on there. He didn't wear those things just for decoration either. He uses them. He'll slam the head into them. Now there's that double kick. I've never seen anybody who uses that the way he does. He hooks those little points right in with both feet. about these two guys they keep they try to keep the fresh man in the ring at all times when you're wrestling in a tag team that's about the most important thing you need to remember keep that fresh man in the ring on a 
seven minute mark, uh, so we're nearing the halfway point in this 15 minute time limit, Bob. Rick's head slammed down on the boot. Uh oh, here it is again. And a third time. Hit him right across the eye that time, too. Oh. the six-man tag team match and coming in here actually seven of them one is not supposed to be in the ring at any time that's Jimmy Hart he's in with his first family members and oh look at Bobby Eaton This match is going to be to the expiration of time. Team with the most balls to their credit when the time expires will be the winners of the match. Introducing at a total of 666 pounds from Huntsville, Alabama, Bobby Eaton, from Delray Beach, Florida, Stan Lane, and from Union City, Tennessee, Sweet Brown Sugar, their manager, Jimmy Hart. Going against a total of 668 pounds from Pensacola, Florida, the Gibson brothers, Rick and Robert. And from Australia, the superstar, Bill Dundee. This match, to the expiration of time, Jerry Calhoun, the referee. Already, we'll see who's starting out here in just a moment. Uh, Rick and Robert Gibson and Dundee coming out of his jumpsuit. Stan Lane coming out of his robe. Bobby Eaton out of his jacket. And as yet, we still haven't had a determination. Yeah, the Gibson brothers have stepped out. So Billy will be starting. Bell Diamond, here we go. Dundee and Sweet Brown Sugar starting out, Dave. Back on the rope. Bill Dundee fired across the ring. Puts Sweet Brown Sugar down. Steps over. Good drop kick by Dundee. And Sweet Brown Sugar hits the mat. Back on his feet quickly. Back to a corner. Dundee takes him down. And again. Halfway across the ring, he was firing him. Tag made, and here is Rick Gibson. Sweet Brown Sugar back to the corner, makes the tag on Stan Lane. Stan out of Florida, Delray Beach, Florida. Over to the corner, Rick makes the tag on Robert Gibson. Robert takes over on Stan Lane. Well, Jimmy Hart gets thrown into the ring here. Bill Dundee went under the ring and was grabbing Jimmy Hart. 
Brown Sugar there to help him out. This Bill's way of saying, get over in that chair and sit down. Hart still isn't seated, standing there by the ring apron. Meanwhile, in the ring, oh, beautiful Bobby Eaton. He was nailed by Dundee from outside. Bobby over to the corner of the tag on Sweet Brown Sugar. Robert Gibson, what a move he put on it. Bobby Eaton was there to break it up before he could get a three count on it. But Robert rolled him out of that corner. Shoulders were down. And Bobby Eaton prevented the count. Robert over to the corner. The tag on Bill Dundee. Brown sugar into the ropes. Dundee with the upper arm waiting for it. Sweet brown sugar. Monkey flip by Dundee. Coco heads to the corner to make a tag, but he was in the wrong corner, so they tag him instead. Now the tag's been made, and here is beautiful Bobby Eaton. Eaton against Dundee. Three minutes, five seconds gone in this expiration of time match. The first fall of action. Eaton. Dundee. They're really beating on each other. Dundee backed into the corner. Oh, he can go to nail him, but he nails Stan Lane instead. Lane got a fist right in the teeth. Eaton still apologizing to Stan Lane. Then he goes after Sweet Brown Sugar while Eaton's preoccupied. Now they make up over here in the corner. Here comes Stan Lane in. Four minutes. Four minutes gone. A little double team. Rick Gibson running Bobby Eaton out of there. Well, Eaton's still there. Referee finally gets him outside. It's Stan Lane and Bill Dundee. They got the assassin. Cuban and Iranian. Steve Kern. Nine of them in there. First family bails out. They head back for the dressing room. It's going to be a disqualification on them. We'll check the time back with the second fall if there is time in a moment. to run off before that last fall. I'm kind of glad you weren't. I don't know. Uh, we could have used you. <laughs> in a moment when those guys jumped in, they had the whole first family in there. You know, uh, uh, Jerry, I did ask you to stay over just a second because I wanted first to show everybody you stand up and looking healthy and going to be back in there in about a week, right? Well, I feel real good, Lance. Uh, I'm just, like you said, waiting on the doctors okay. Uh, I feel 100%. I feel as good, you know. I, of course, there never was really a lot of, a lot of pain with the thing. And so... Uh, I'm just uh, waiting to see that the doctor says everything's okay, but I think I talked to him on the phone yesterday, and he said probably next week be ready to go. All right. Listen, something I wanted to ask you about. Now, here you had the first family, and we had the match going, a six-man match. Cuban and the Iranian assassins jump in. You got the whole family. A lot of people ask me about this. You know, why do promoters let, let something like that go on? What is this thing? I mean, these guys just go wild. Well... Yeah, I understand what you get. The people are saying, you know, can't somebody, can't you or the promotion or somebody do something about this? 
Well, you got to understand that the promotion probably is doing about everything they can to uh, to curb this. I mean, they find the guys, they threaten with suspensions, but you've got to understand uh, two things about wrestling. First of all, uh, you know, this is not a sissy sport or anything, Lance. This no is way. a rough sport. You're going to expect this kind of stuff when you get in this business. If you can't stand the heat, stay out of the kitchen. Mm. So the wrestlers themselves, they expect this kind of thing. Second of all, you've got to understand that uh, this is also, it's a sport and it's also a business. <coughs> it's the way I make my living. It's the way I, everybody in this makes their the money. And, and uh, you know, they say that the money is the, really the, not only the root of all evil, it's about the root of everything. And the way to make mo a lot of money in the wrestling business is... Uh, to be the featured wrestler and a lot of these guys come out here just trying to do that they try to get themselves uh, uh, you know as notorious and and try to make as much confusion and just to, you know just to be on yeah. doing something all the time trying mm -hmm. to create some sort of controversy and and I think that's that's what Hart is trying to do you know he's trying to be the biggest thing that's ever hit this area and in his mind the way to do that is to interfere in every match is to make the people as mad at him as he possibly can and to make the other wrestlers as mad at him as he possibly can. And he's doing a dead gum good job of it. Because you, he's got, you know, everybody Everybody wants to get Hart. So. You and Billy have mentioned this, the fact that Hart feeds these guys uh, this snow job, so to speak, about how to great and how to be this and that. And and i got to believe that, boy, he is doing some of that mind control stuff. Sure. Because these I mean, guys are just insane. Well... Hart surrounds himself with this whole, you know, a whole group of guys. He calls them family. But if you if you pay attention to the situation, Hart is always and tries to remain the center of attention. You know, he may come out here and tell everybody, yeah, I've got the world's greatest athlete, mm -hmm. but he wants to be the star. Mm -hmm. He wants to be the big shot. Yeah. Thank you for sticking around with okay. us. Okay, I'm enjoying looking for it. Okay. See you next week. Going to see you back in that ring. Davey, how about a recap on today? All right, in the opening match today, it was Dutch Mantell defeating the Invader. Midnight Express, Dennis Condry, Randy Rose, Norvell Austin on the outside as they defeated Roy Rogers and Rick McCord by disqualification when the Gibsons came in and uh, had something to say to the Midnight Express with a couple of boards. It was Speed defeating Dennis Upton in about three minutes. The Assassins over Rick Morton and Chief Thundercloud in a tag team match. And and then in the uh, six-man tag action, the expiration of time match, time did expire after that first fall, but Bill Dundee, Rick, and Robert Gibson were the winners of it as they won by disqualification uh, on Bobby Eaton, Stan Lane, and Sweet Brown Sugar when the Assassins, the Cuban and Iranian, uh, hit the ring uh, at 4 minutes 22 seconds. Referee at that point disqualified the first family, so the win in the six-man expiration of time match goes to superstar Bill Dundee and the Gibson brothers, Rick and Robert. You know, uh, Dave, I know the folks like to see the rough-and-tumble stuff and all, but sometimes we read when the circumstances like today, we just felt like that, boy, it was ready to blow loose and get out of hand and uh, all of that, and it was just a good thing not to have another fall right, right. at that particular point. So we uh, did have an opportunity to bring you a lot of action for Dave Brown, Lance Russell, saying bye-bye. The announcers on this program are selected and paid by parties other than this station, namely the promoters of championship wrestling.